Very good. If we were to reduce everything that we have said in these 37 pages, what can we say now? Not very much. We can say that there, with the thinking, there is a history, and that history that is very vague, that history of thinking, has to do with these questions of logic. That that is not exactly practical in, for daily life, but these ideas sometimes are organized and then they're useful to do things or to understand things. Then that organization of the ideas configure a certain type of logic and that logic work with certain with some principles, some laws, and a certain type of method. That is the mechanic that the thinking process can follow in order to uh, carry a reasonable, coherent sequence. So, what are we saying? We're saying that the thinking process can be more or less orderly. And if it is more or less orderly, it should take into consideration some principles, general principles that operate on all things, some laws that are extremely ample that also operate in different fields and a method of thought that allow us also to operate in different fields. Then if it is complete and is in and then is interesting interesting. This principle, this laws and this method could be useful to be to uh, to be applied in different fields even though when in each field we have to make translations that correspond to that language. We will not use the language, the historical language, when we do biology. But with certainty, when we do history, how, as in biology, they will have to operate the same principles, the same laws, and will have to work the same type of method. Then things that are really separated among themselves they will begin to configure themselves in an orderly way. Then the world begins to fit, and then the image of the world becomes more compact. And that's the end of the, of the recording. The material. The material. Yeah. All right. You ask for... Just that last paragraph. Then things that are... that seems to be very disconnected or separated among themselves begin to configure themselves in an orderly way. Then the world begins to fit and then the image of the world that we have becomes more compact. Do you think he's talking about the relational thinking at that point? No. No. I gave up on the relational thinking. You did? Yes. <laughs> I, well, because he pointed out a direct material, so I have, to, I have to see that I was barking at the wrong tree. I, I wanted to find some connection, but so far I'm going to have to leave it in parentheses. I haven't found any. Uh -huh. Then I will go with the definition or what, what he talks about relational thinking. Yeah that is chaotic. <laughs> well, it starts out chaotic, didn't he say? Huh? Didn't he say it starts out chaotic? No, he said it's the main attribute. The, the, no, he said to, it has, as a minimum, he said, it's chaotic. Yeah. As a minimum. And that's a, that's correspond to what he says about the... Um, uh, how do you, how he calls it? He calls it the Alexandrian Hermetism. Oh, yeah. yeah. And the... Surrealism. Surrealism. So the mixture of the two. Wow. So I started with going into finding out about Alexandrian Hermetism. And, uh, boy, I have a lot of learning to do. Yeah. And Kurt, what, could, what is Surrealism, really? What is Surrealism? Well, I was thinking about it. Um, there's a wonderful painting of Marguerite where he has an easel in front of a window with a canvas on it and the painting on the canvas is what's outside the window.
Uh, so it's a little landscape scene that continues on either side of the painting. Yeah. In I the see. in the window, and the easel is there holding yeah. it. So there's that, and another one of his famous ones is um, it's a drawing of a pipe, a Sherlock Holmes kind of pipe, the one that bends. Yeah. And it says underneath it in French, this is not a pipe. Well, don't you uh, think that the Bamazo Woods Park is in this theme? I, I will have to say yes. Yeah. I, I got the book and I got, got a whole bunch of pictures of the whole thing. And it's definitely, is the word oniric a word in English? That dreamlike. Uh, dreamlike. Yeah. Completely. And so are yeah. these pieces. Yeah. And I assume, you know, that the combination of all those ideas, hermetic tradition yeah. with the dreams is in the uh -huh. in the line right. of the relational thinking. Yeah. yeah. At least the way that it was described in that in that talk. This is fascinating because Magritte is so much better than that Dali. Uh huh. He is so much incredible. Uh huh. I I went I went to to Dali's house though. Uh huh. And I did the entire tour. It's really amazing. And mm, I, I had a very low image of him. In 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 Barcelona, near Barcelona, is in Cadaqués, and and really when you see the 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 painting and you see the whole thing, you realize well he obviously was into something. But he was more commercial than him. He much more, more commercial, yes. Much more yeah. interesting. But you, he went up when you went. When we went in to your Europe, estimation. you see. Yeah, those are the weird things that I end up doing in that entire yeah. trip that I couldn't understand why I was doing them. But I just must have been Mary's, Mary's influence too. She likes a, to see a lot. painters, yeah, right? A lot. She, but she, her interest was very different than mine. That was very interesting. Uh -huh. yeah. But um, she wanted to see the whole thing about the girl, the woman. What uh, woman? I, the, Dali's uh, obsession. Oh, okay. Uh, I forgot her name. And and and, and actually, remember. he built a room for her only. Uh huh. And the and the bed. It's a, it's a heart shape, and uh, really amazing, very surrealistic. Uh -huh. <laughs> Obviously, they they share a lot of love, and they did lo love each other. It has a painting of her, very new, very naked. Uh, what's her name? I'm gonna remember, yeah. but anyway, fits in the surrealistic category. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> it's so funny that Paul brought up the same thing that we were talking, eh? the principle number nine, the principle oh, yes. of liberty. Yeah. That is so radical to say that you can do whatever you want. Yeah. And it is radical. And we were talking about destabilization. Exactly right. At that time. right. Yeah, he was saying that his entire intention is always to bring the person up yeah intentionally with everything who said that paul said that to me uh-huh yeah. we were talking about a, i think that was a tonight, personal this wasn't tonight this was no before. it was four or five months ago uh-huh that we were discussing different things you know and we were talking about the books we were uh -huh. talking about you know interpretations and things like that and and that's when he volunteered that and that in his work with him he Silo always wanted to bring things to a diff in a different direction than you know what is normally accepted and he say is an ascending direction uh -huh. always uh-huh you know, I thought it was very interesting yeah yeah I, lots of interesting things. Looking for the fourth meaning of a word is another interesting. Thing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and getting away from any kind of uh, what did he call it? Buzzwords. 
Yeah, yeah staying away words. from buzzwords. Yeah. Yeah. It was good. Everything. Nice. Nice mm -hmm. conversation. Mm -hmm.